Hey everyone, I'm Blue, and if you're wondering why I'm in a vault, the Rooster Teeth community can get savage from both haters and lovers of the products, and I'm taking no chances, so I'm protecting myself. Anyway, let's talk about Monty Ohm. Monty Ohm was best known on the internet for creating stylish and creative fight animations on YouTube, which caught the eye of Rooster Teeth CEO, Bernie Burns, who hired him for animation for Red vs. Blue Season 8-10. Up until then, Red vs. Blue was made by recording footage from the Halo game, so adding animation to the series was pretty big. They weren't just limited to Halo maps or simple gunfights, they could do a ton of other things with the creative choreography and style that Monty brought. The contributions Monty made to the show were really well received, so why did he stop working on Red vs. Blue? Well, one night he had a dream of four colors. Red, white, black, and yellow. He later fleshed them out into ideas and decided to ask Rooster Teeth about making a show of these ideas. They agreed on this, and this show became Ruby. Over the years, Ruby surpassed Red vs. Blue as Rooster Teeth's most popular show with a ton of merchandise and expanded universe material to its name. And today, we're going to talk about Ruby's beginning. Now, by beginnings, I'm not talking about the first season. I'm talking about the trailers released to hype up the first season. Usually, trailers use scenes from the final product to try to sell the audience on said product, but these trailers are more like shorts, telling their own story with footage you can't find in the show. Let's take a look at each trailer to get a taste about what Ruby's about. The red trailer focuses on Ruby Rose as she fights Grimm, the monsters of the show, near her mother's grave. The short doesn't have Ruby talk, so you expect the visuals to tell us stuff about her, and we really don't get stuff about her. Luckily, there's an excellently animated fight scene that takes up most of the trailer, which provides something to be excited about when the story doesn't really give you anything. This feels like a pilot episode that was used to pitch the series, since the grim design will be changed once Volume 1 rolled around. A good start, I say, but I think they could have showed more personality to Ruby than she fights and has a dead mother, a trait many characters unfortunately share. The white trailer focuses on Waishni as she sings at a concert while reminiscing on the battle that gave her the scar on her face. This trailer still has no talking, unless you count melodramatic singing as talking, and a great fight scene, but improves on what I complained about in the last trailer by giving us background to Waishni through the visuals. You can tell a lot about Weiss, like her loneliness and being under pressure by high expectations, just through the framing of shots and her facial expressions. It's a step up from the last trailer, and it's great to see the show improving itself before it even aired. The black trailer focuses on Blake Belladonna as she teams up with Adam Toros to raid a train filled with deadly robots, the trailer ending with Blake leaving Adam. This is the first trailer to have voice acting, and... Perfect. Move up to the next car. We don't even learn much about Blake in this trailer, other than she fights well and has a beef with her ex. The voice acting does get better in the actual show, but in this trailer it sounds emotionless, which I guess fits Blake and Adam since they lean heavy into the emo. To give credit where credit is due, this is my favorite fight scene of the four trailers, which makes me conflicted to say if it's bad, since the fight scene is really good. The Blake trailer has a ton of good ideas in terms of story, but it needed to flesh them out more to make them more interesting outside of the fight scene. The last and worst of the trailers, the yellow trailer, focuses on Yang Xiao Long as she goes to a club to get intel on someone, but when she doesn't get the answer she's looking for, she just fights everyone for no reason. The dudes were aggressive, yes, but they're not trying to fight her. Then she punches their boss in the face for funsies and starts the whole fight. It just makes Yang look dumb, which she's far from in the actual show. I mean, the fight scene is great, but in terms of story, this is the worst of the trailers. And that's it for the Ruby trailers. They did a good job to hype people up for the show with great fights and character designs, but the characterization is weak for most of the characters in the trailer, the black trailer's voice acting isn't that good, and the yellow trailer's story is just bad. But they're still entertaining despite those faults. We regret to inform you that before Blue was gonna record the ending to this video that he was beaten senseless by both the fans and haters of Ruby and is currently unconscious. He'll be back next week for a new episode so don't worry. Until then screw Activision.